This is the 2022 Specialized Levo Expert model. Um, this build uh, comes pretty well equipped. Suspension is pretty good. Comes with an X2 Elite and a Fox 38 uh, Grip 2 damper. Uh, X01 uh, drivetrain uh, for the most part. Uh, you got a GX cassette. The only changes to this bike uh, are the Maxxis tires. Ask the guy front and rear, uh, double down in the back, and uh, just the regular EXO casing up front. Uh, changed the, this is a size S3, came with a 150 dropper, which is a really short dropper. So uh, updated it to a 175 dropper. I uh, need to change the bars to uh, some uh, carbon uh, one-up bars, uh, that's coming. Uh, so far, yeah, the bike's been great so far. Um, it's as shown with the uh, XT, XT uh, trail pedals, which weighs about a pound. It's uh, 51 and a half pounds. So climbing in the default setting, I'm in turbo mode right now, but climbing on the default setting doesn't seem as powerful. Um, I'm sure you could adjust that with the app, but this is how it is straight out the box. Yeah, it just doesn't feel quite as powerful as I thought it was going to be. Some technical climbing parts. Great, no pedal strikes. This thing's got 160 millimeter cranks. This is gonna be tough to pedal strike with this bike, which is great. Uh, more e-bikes should come with these short cranks. All right, so I set my boost and um, shuttle mode and assist levels all to 100%. And uh, just using turbo mode right now. Just to see, just to test this motor out. Much better than yesterday. A nice thing about this bike is uh, how well it handles. Um, I would say it's very similar to my YT decoy. Very similar, you know, has a pretty low center of gravity, a short cranks. And the handling is actually very, very close to my YT, my old YT decoy. Uh, the only difference is um, it feels a little bit more refined than the decoy. The decoy had all kinds of uh, little rattles and stuff uh, as you're riding. This one, uh, pretty quiet. So it's, it feels like a slightly more refined uh, YT decoy. That's, that's what it feels like. Um, but handling wise and performance wise, um, it's about the same. It's actually very similar to the decoy on, on how it handles, how it turns. Um, yeah, it's a fantastic bike so far. Um, I would say it's just a tad more playful than, than the decoy. Um, but uh, for the most part, it rides very similar in terms of its capability, like its downhill capabilities is very similar to the decoy. Handles very similar, similarly as well. Uh, it's got the uh, Fox 38 uh, 160 millimeter fork. I think uh, this, this bike, uh, just, just with its capabilities, I think it would work great with a, a 170 fork. Uh, that might be a, a, an upgrade uh, moving forward. 
um, yeah, uh, these tires are great. Battery life is phenomenal. Brakes are actually quite good. These Code RS brakes are actually quite good. I, I wasn't a fan of the Code Rs that came on my decoy, but these Code RSs, um, 2022 Code RSs, I don't know if they improved it, but they're very powerful. Um, like going down steep stuff very fast, it's pretty easy if I squeeze hard to lock up that front wheel. So it's, uh, it's actually quite good. That shock, it's performing quite well, you know? Um, once you have it set up, once it has the right air pressure, um, it, it'll be it'll be pretty good. Now um, I tried jumping a little bit with this bike, and um, seems to not pop quite as quite as uh, quite as much as I'd like. It doesn't seem to pop that much. Um, maybe it's just a setting uh, that I have. But right now the rebound's reasonably fast on the on this bike, and it's still it's still not popping uh, as, quite as much as I'd like it to pop. Uh, uh, go, going over jumps and stuff like that. But it's very planted. Going downhill, it's super planted. No issues going downhill whatsoever. All right, so who's this bike for? Um, I really feel like this bike uh, will fit a lot of different people. Um, every, everyone from, uh, you know, pretty novice riders to uh, more advanced riders. Um, it's, it, you know, it feels pretty agile for, for such a heavy bike. Um, uh, you know, jumps pretty well. I think uh, the suspension, I, I wish it was a little bit more progressive so you could pop off things a little more, but um, um, that might be uh, fixable with some volume spacers added to that shock. Uh, some of the cons that I mentioned were the uh, the short dropper post comes with a 150 dropper for a S3 and S4. Uh, that's a little short. Um, wish it came with a longer dropper so so that you wouldn't have to spend money to uh, to, to upgrade that. Um, the other con is, um, you know, it's, it's still a heavy bike. It's still a 51 pound bike. So, you know, handling, cornering, uh, all those things, you're still going to feel all that weight. Uh, you can't hide that weight. Um, um, so you, you just have to adapt your riding. You'll get used to it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit spoiled. I'm used to riding a 40 pound e-bike. So, you know, handling and everything feels very natural. feels like a normal, uh, uh, acoustic bike, but, uh, Hopping on this bike, it definitely feels very heavy to me. With that said, I still highly recommend this bike. It does everything very well. It's got a great motor, a great battery, good warranty, um, geometry spot on, super adjustable. I had it at 63 and a half degrees the whole time and I think uh, 63 and a half to 64 and a half is really the sweet spot for, uh, for most bikes these days. And uh, uh, the Geo was, was really good. Short, pretty short chain stay and everything mullet setup it's spot on in my opinion uh well if you have any uh, other questions uh, let me know and i'll try to uh get back to you thanks bye all right let's see how this bike handles the descents to uh, throw it around. Not using all this weight to throw around.
definitely more weight than I'm used to. Shot that. Oh my gosh. I kept uh, overshooting the berms. Kind of went in a little bit too hot. Yeah, so overall, I think the corner's relatively well. You do feel the weight. You do feel all the heft on this bike. You do get a bit of an upper body workout. That's for sure. <laughs>